Hi everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today our expert trainer will be discussing about simple workflow service. So watch the video till the end. SWS Simple Workflow Service This simple workflow service basically helps you to build a workflow among the distributed application. So if you have got an application with different modules, then which module to run first, what should be the checkpoint which should be checked before transferring the task to the second module. Then execution of the task will be done on the second module to verify that the execution that was done on the second module has been correctly done. There is a decision list which is checked. If that turns out to be true, then the next workflow task will be done. So this is how you can have a full visibility in your architecture and you can create a flow framework of your application. In this simple workflow service, many applications, when you, why do you basically need a simple workflow service? Many applications relies on asynchronous and distributed processing because of its features like scalability, availability and deployment flexibility. Your SWS, the service which we are talking about, is majorly used by the developers. Over here, we just should know that this particular service is available and can be used by the developers. It helps the programming infrastructure of an application where the application is a distributed application. So it, this simple workflow service helps you to create a workflow between the various components of the distributed application. In case of workflow, simple workflow service, you have basically got a workflow starter. This workflow starter will have a, this is basically a server which is available with you. And the workflow starter will have activity task list, like what tasks are required to be performed. At the time when you set up a simple workflow service, you are required to define and register all the tasks as all the activities as tasks in your task list. After that, once you have defined the task, then you will be defining the workflow between the tasks and then it is the workflow starter who manages the task being run in between. There will be multiple components like this. There will be, this you can call it as, on the cloud, you can call it as SWF Management Console. Over here, you have got a task list, what has to be done, and you have got a decision list, when, what has to be done. So this is basically what has to be done, and when it has to be done. So in the decision task list, you have got workflow that if task one is successful, execute task two. If task one is not ex ex successful, execute task three. So like this kind of workflow can be defined in your decision list. Via the AWS SWF console, you are able to see the tasks which are getting executed. In actual, your workflow starter doesn't do the work. These are the activity workers who do the task. Workflow starter only controls the tasks which are being done. So workflow starter basically initiates the application decider, which is nothing but the decision list, the one who has the decision list. Decider will schedule the activity task and the activity workers will perform the task. The data which is required by the activity worker will be provided by the workflow starter to the activity workers. When the event is in progress, there will be a history which will be maintained what tasks are getting executed successfully and which tasks are not getting executed successfully. 
based on this history the decider will take a decision whether we are required to move on to the next task or we need to read like to read to the same task again so that is the whole idea behind your simple workflow service where you will be having a workflow starter the workflow starter will basically start your application and it will have a list of the tasks which are required to be done again and again but when it is required to be done that workflow decider is available with the decider program which basically has this kind of flow chart kind of thing like if this condition is true if it is yes then perform this task if it is no then do this so like that kind of whole workflow is available with your decider which will decide when what activity is required to be performed there is the console the simple workflow console is the place where the data get exchanged between the activity worker and the decider task the complete history is maintained so that whenever required anybody can come and understand at what state currently the given task is at once the task given by the application is completed the workflow is ended and then it waits for the next application task to be given to the swf so that is what your swf is like if i say if you talk about a use case for this particular thing then you can consider this scenario now over here what's happening is like suppose say i have my like i am from a news company and i have got my reporters who are recording clips from an event so they are recording small small clips from the event and they are uploading it into the bucket now all these four reporters of mine are covering the same event suppose these four reporters are covering the same event so they are creating small small clips from various directions of the event and they are uploading those clips into the bucket now this s3 bucket will upload these chunks which has been uploaded by the reporter to an ec2 instance on this ec2 instance we have got a workflow starter which has got the task list what action is required to be performed so first a task which is there in the task list will be suppose say these chunks which are uploaded by my reporters will be encoded in the format which is suitable for my news application to broadcast the particular stream or the information which has given to me by my reporters so that first task will be done by this they will encode these small chunks of video into the right format and it will forward these encoded video clips to the decider the decider will check whether the chunks which has been encoded as per the requirement has been encoded properly or not if the task execution was successful then the chunks will be uploaded in an another bucket s3 bucket where all these small small chunks will be combined together by a program so and then it will be uploaded either back to the same bucket or maybe to another s3 bucket from where my broadcasting team may pick up the stream of the information which is given now how this workflow will be defined that can be done into simple workflow service so there will be a application module who will be encoding there will be an application module who are combining the chunks so these are the two application modules which are working the output of module 1 is basically input of module 2 but if the output of module 1 is not as per the required format 
then the task may get failed. So you can define the whole workflow in simple workflow service wherein there will be a decider who will check whether the encoding has been successfully done or not. If it has been successfully done, then only it will forward the chunks into this S3 bucket wherein the messages are being pulled for getting if encoding task was failed then again the message will be forwarded back to the same server it will do the encoding work again and will again forward it to the decider to check whether the task has been done correctly or not so all this workflow can be defined in your SWS service simple workflow service so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if in case you missed upon any concept or if you want to dive deeper into the concepts then we have something really special for you we have our free class on amazon aws solution architect certification for beginners under this free class you'll be learning about why and who should learn aws cloud services deployment models and aws services as well and the most important part is you'll be getting hands-on labs, job opportunities, along with Docker and Kubernetes in AWS and amazing, amazing stuff. So if you want to register for this free class, all you have to do is just log on to your browser and type k21academy.com forward slash AWS SA02. And after that, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. You just have to click on book your free seat now, select your event date, add your name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes save my seat and after that you'll be seeing this kind of page you just have to save this link on the extreme right add it to your calendars and i'll see you in the free class till then keep learning